I think it's called the star. They put a star on your helmet or something when you're too big to carry the ball. Yeah. I, I, how did well, that feel? I didn't even need the star. They knew my... They, knew <laughs> I, they, <laughs> they can look at you and see you was too big. Yeah, this guy is not going to carry. But we used to create plays where we would intentionally fumble it. So you could pick it up. Got pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all was cheating. It wasn't cheating. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs>
I still have the the yearbook of how many kids were in there, and there was. Yeah, I was probably. The <laughs> he was the only. only yes. He was the only spot. <laughs> I was. There was a lot of Asian kids. One of these kids <laughs> doesn't belong. Was, you can see like who was military and right, who and was, who wasn't. Yeah, so I think I was the only black little black kid there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so moving to Cali. Yeah, is that when you kind of got ingrained in sports? I mean, really got ingrained in sports because I I can recall you you weren't that active. And sports, of course, over in Japan, there wasn't a whole lot of sports to be done over there. And you were yeah. young. But when you got to Cali, it just took off. Yeah, I mean, I never got into tackle football just yet. But I always, you know, I was watching you. And then I got into flag football. And then I played baseball, which baseball was my first sport. My first love was picking up that baseball bat and, you know, hitting home runs and doing all that. But, yeah, I got into sports. Living on, we still lived on base. My dad was still in the military then. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just opened my eyes to even like, you know, coming from Japan, that's a whole different culture. But even coming to the States, coming back to the States, it's just, it's a different feeling. Like you still have to have that welcoming energy uh -huh. that Japan has of, because you're, you're getting introduced to different kids every some odd weeks, you know, right. like you have a best friend for because people are moving around, yeah, and, exactly. and, that, and so, that's kind of tough on, on a kid because yeah. you 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 really don't get any real friends, yeah. so to speak, because it's a as they call it a revolving door, so yeah. it's like in and out. How difficult was that? Because I, I do recall it was so fun. I remember I went to Cali one time to visit you guys, mm. and and I want to talk about two things. One, how tough is it? Being a Marine, so to speak, as they call them, Marine brats, was, was that a, a difficult situation at home as far as, because we know there there's, you know, stricter rules. Mm -hmm. and was that kind of for you? Did you find that as well? That like your other little friends that weren't in the Marines, was it a little different as far as the home upbringing? I wouldn't say it was, it wasn't, it honestly wasn't too, too strict. My dad was still like, we were still all about just being outside, letting me roam, letting me be a kid. But I mean, it was, there's some details in the, there was some things where I was like, you know, kids like to drag their feet, do all that. You right. Know? Man, I, I still have it embedded in my head. Like if I hear like, like any type of <laughs> slide or anything like that, it's just like, I don't know, if something happens to you, just my dad would just be like, pick your feet up. <laughs> <laughs> every every two seconds. So anytime I hear like slippers or anything like that, like anything sliding, anybody dragging their feet, it's just like somehow it's gotten to me where it's just like, man, kick your feet up. Right, yeah. yeah you, you don't even think about it. It's yeah, just a little just stuff like that come up. embedded in me about that. But everything else was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. It wasn't too crazy. I, I remember when you, when you were young, like you said, you were playing baseball, you're playing all, all kinds of sports. I mean, you pretty, pretty much played all sports growing up. But there was a time where you really just kind of separated yourself and, and growth. Talk a little bit about that, because I remember you you played in Cali. And how long were you in California? I think we were there for four years. Like four years. Mm -hmm. and then you finally moved back to Texas. Yeah. And then that's where the football really took off, because Texas is really big football. Cali is, a, is one of those states where baseball, basketball is a whole lot of sports, but Texas is football, football. What did that feel like, and, and how did that feel for you when you got to Texas? That was it. Could you feel it automatically, like when you land, like this is football country? Yeah, I mean, football is definitely important in Texas. It was the number one thing when I when I moved back. Well, we were born here, but when I moved back to Dallas area. It was you know everything was about football. But I still stuck with baseball for a long time, ran track. I ran, started running track in Cali and was one of the fastest kids in Cali. Right. I don't even think anybody, a lot of people don't know that, but you know, I like to say- I didn't even know that, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah. I like to say that. <laughs> I was one of the fastest, I was before I got huge, but right. <laughs> when I was a little slender, I did have top notch speed. So I was one of the fastest kids in, in uh, I think it was like under, Whatever we would, we would go to track meets all over Cali, and 
And see, I, that's something to learn. You learn something new every day. That He's my next friend. I didn't even know he ran track like that. I just knew he was fast. I didn't know you ran track, though. Yeah. That's me and, crazy. Me and Kamisha ran track in, in Cali. We were, we were upper echelon in that. They're like pretty dominant. Yeah, and then I came to... He's trying to be you know, all <laughs> humble. Upper <laughs> echelons. So we're, we're pretty dominant. <laughs> yeah, then we came back to Texas, and it was more uh, football-oriented than I... Put on some weight, start eating that Texas food. And I was getting off the the Cali fish diet, and then <laughs> came here. Started it, eating. it got on the chicken. Yeah, start going pork. Crazy. Yeah, start putting on some pounds. Start getting real big. Was always taller than a lot of kids, but then I started putting on some mass and kept growing. So then uh, I kept with flag for even here. I still play. So flag. what was that about? Because it was, it was, it's one thing to to not play. I mean, I didn't play tackle football for a while, but it was because I was smaller. But you were big, and, and was it just something that in Cali that was tackle really big in Cali, or was it flag was just a thing to do? Yeah, I think. I mean, I didn't really get introduced to tackle like that in Cali. I mean, everything was flag. I mean, we were we travel all over, all over Cali doing flag tournaments, and they were huge. So it was never, I mean, I would watch football. Like, man, I would want, you know, I'd love to hit somebody, but it was never, yeah, it wasn't, I never got too, I don't remember, maybe my mom. And see, and that's, and that's the culture thing, though, because it's state to state, really. Mm-hmm. I even now, you see in, in Cali, seven on seven football really dominated Cali and kind of moved this way, migrated this way down to Texas. Texas, you start playing tackle football at four years old. Yeah. I mean, the helmet is too big for some of these kids, yeah, body, which I think of, yeah, I, it's a bobblehead. And I, and I really think that's not safe at all. But Texas, you, you're almost forced to play tackle football. So that's why I brought that up, because you came and wasn't really introduced to tackle football until like seventh or eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So once you started to play tackle football, how was that transition? I mean, it was awesome. I mean, I I was at the age where I was ready. You know, I was I was ready to hit. So my brain was solid. I was big. <laughs> <laughs> I was too big to carry the football. That's when that's when I first started. Was when I was still had the I the, the start the helmet. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had the stop. I had top speed, top agility. I just they were. I was overweight to carry the rock. They had a weight limit of who could carry the. Football. So you had to wait. So the, so what did, what did that make you? I mean, actually, that kind of probably helped you a little bit. Yeah. Because it made you really want to carry the ball. And by the time you got to carry the ball, you was probably a lot meaner <laughs> than you would have been yeah. because it, it took you so long. So talk about a little bit about that because I, I think they have something. I think it's called the star. They put a star on your helmet or something when you're too big to carry the ball. Yeah. I, I, how did well, that I feel? I didn't even need the star. They knew my. They, knew <laughs> knew <I was> they <laughs> could look at you and see you was too big. Yeah, this guy is not gonna carry. But we used to create plays where we would intentionally fumble it, so you could pick it up. Guy, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all was cheating. It wasn't cheating. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was just see, a little slip up in the the language. Okay, so it was this like is the first, I never this could. Really the first I've heard of this. Like yeah. I, I never heard this before. So you guys had a play where the the little guy would actually fumble, yes. so you could pick it up and run with the ball. Yeah, that's it was like cheap. on the reverse. He would just drop it. I pick it up on the reverse, get some momentum going, scoop and score. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't do this at home. That's cheating. <laughs> that, that's called cheating. That's I don't cheating even know if they have that. A lot of a lot of pop. Warner or whatever we were in, they, a lot of them don't have that rule. They let anybody carry the rock. But Well, I, it's changed now. So yeah. for you, you really didn't get to carry it off. When was your first time really saying, this is what I want to do as far as from baseball to football? When did you really fall in love with football? Man, I mean, I always, I always loved football. But it was when you were playing. It was just watching you, and I just wanted to, man, that's awesome. It looks great. I wanted to follow in those footsteps of making it to the top tier, and yeah. So I was, and then as soon as I got to carry the rock in middle school, and I was playing both ways, I was hitting, and I got to deliver hits. So, <laughs> Which was, one did you like better? Man, I don't know. 
like I get asked that all the time because I'm, you know, one of the few, one of the few to do both sides, like real. Yeah. And I don't know, man. There's nothing like there's nothing like creaming the quarterback. <laughs> there's nothing like that. It's just devastating on every level of because everyone stops. Like it's done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you get off the field, you get fourth down, you took sack, fumble. You know, everybody. Like, it's huge. It's huge getting to the quarterback, and it's so hard. Like you could have a perfect rush, everything like spin move, get off me, balls out. But as when you get that that op to get there, there's it's because you've been working so hard for it. Right. It's not like a play that's drawn up like a running back. You know what I'm saying? Like you know you're getting a rock. You know running over somebody. That's a good feeling. Getting in the end zone. All the girls love it. <laughs> look, you see, wait, wait. You see how excited he's getting. Yeah. That, that's how you know that a guy <laughs> has a love for football. But we're going to talk about the transition because he actually had to go through a really tough change to end up, as he say, creaming the quarterback <laughs> and, and running the ball. There was a tough change he had to go through. We're going to talk about this change. This is all about change and transition. And once again, it's the family edition. I'm learning something that I didn't know. We'll be back. This is Crockett's Corner. Welcome back to Crockett's Corner, the family edition. Yeah, yeah, we're about to get into it. This is my nephew, Henry Melton, all pro defensive end. And we'll talk, we'll get to all of that. We're, we're starting off early, though, because this is something that I like to talk about with the family side of it, because a lot of times you really don't know what, I, I guess, as they can say, who's watching when you're doing what you're doing and me being a professional player never knew how close my nephew was watching me and, and, and looking and, and wanting to do what I did. So it's interesting to get into this, but it's also interesting because he also has to go through a lot of changes and everything himself to get to where he got into. So we were talking about you playing football and you're doing it coming from Cali. And now you're back in Dallas, you're in Cedar Hill and, and Cedar Hill was, you know, at that time was, beginning to be all black <laughs> so so you go from japan being pre basically the only black then you're in cali where it's not many blacks now you come to see the hill which is a culture shock to a lot of blacks and and, and then you fall in love with football and i that's when i noticed i noticed that you, you really took a liking to football around the fifth sixth grade and, and i started to to lend my because at this time my son was a lot younger so you were basically kind of that borrowed son. <laughs> that borrowed son. Yeah. So, so what I really recall too, Henry, is that with you, I remember you coming from Cedar Hill to Grapevine, and and you were good at sports, but I remember a growth spread. I remember because I used to get you shoes on my Nike deal. Mm -hmm. And I remember leaving, going <laughs> to training camp, and I remember you calling me saying, um, can you you think you can get me some more shoes? And I was like, I just bought you three or four pair of shoes. From that my middle school, going into that middle school year around that 13, around that I grew maybe like five, six, six inches in like a year. Yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah. I, I left you at five seven. Yeah. Then I came back, I was maybe like six two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> like six two from a size eight shoe to like twelve. <laughs> yeah, no, I went to like, yeah, twelve, thirteen. I I grew so tall, they put me on the basketball team growing like in middle school. It was I was never a basketball guy, but I had to learn. <laughs> I knew I knew how to be physical. That was it. Right. Like, I knew how to grab boards. I knew how to throw the ball down. That was about it. <laughs> it was. I fouled out every game. He couldn't shoot. Trust me. I can tell you that he couldn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to find it. <laughs> and I feel Ben Simmons. I'm like, hey, it was. I'm not you, say league, you, but you can understand Ben yeah, Simmons' problem. If you not. Yeah, you gotta find it. It takes a while to find that confidence. So, lie. so you talked about a little bit, and I, and I definitely want to hit on this because you were going through a lot, like you said. This, this was probably your transition year that that formulated a lot of things as far as mentally, emotionally. I mean, there was a lot going on. You became a bigger, bigger young man. You went from five seven to six two. 
your mom and dad went through a divorce and and this this is a a tough transition is something that that I I really want to talk about and I know you know you want to talk about it as well because it can help a lot of kids out there whose parents are going through a divorce or went through a divorce it's it's two ways you can go about that you can let it make you or let it break you and for you having your dad who was really really involved and then for that to disappear kind of sort of you know mm-hmm. How how tough is that mentally for for you? And what do you remember about that? Yeah, it's 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 still tough to talk about. I mean, it was just it was a tough time. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you have you know you have somebody, you know, obviously your dad just you know there all the time, super involved, and then you know split, you know, and then you know you go through it. As you're growing as a kid, right, like you're still coming into your own self. So you're still trying to figure that out. You know, I was, you know, I'm not. I was a little troublemaker in in middle going into high school. I mean, I was just, you know, I was super just anti active. But then you know, I had my mind on other things. You know, it's hard to pay attention necessarily and 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 still be involved in in school. So you need that outlet though. Yeah, you need you need something because because I mean quite frankly, let's just be real. You're you can't, you're pissed off. You're angry about it. You're angry. You're pissed off because you don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So what what outlet did you use? Is that when you because I know like you said there was a time where you really wasn't focused on school and things of that day. That was your way of of, of really releasing. Yeah. Let's... So so what I mean. How, what shook you back, I guess, into saying, you know what? I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm going to actually use this to become something different. When when did that happen? I mean, just still like watching, watching you play. I mean, playing sports, you know, watching you play, watching how hard my mom was working to, to, you know, to keep us afloat. You know, she was working, you know, multiple jobs. You know, she didn't want to necessarily bother you with all that. And there was just, you know, there was drama. So it was just, you know, the only thing I would ask for is you could give me, put me up with some cleats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some new shoes that you were growing out of. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, yeah, it, there was a lot of, there was a lot of motivating factors. I mean, I did have some good friends. You know, to keep my mind off that mm-hmm. sports easy. I mean, I was honestly almost too busy to even let it really sink sink me back. Right. You know, just staying super active, and uh, yeah, I mean, all that it really helped get my mind off it. So mm-hmm. there, there was one vivid time I, I recall, and and I, I, I recall this is where it, it really sank in for you. I guess you you were. Uh, a big time athlete, played running back, played defensive end, played linebacker, played all over the field at Grapevine and, and was an All-American high school athlete. But then I remember when that, when it sank in, I think for, for you, as far as I can't be a goofball or or I, as they say, you, you mess around and find out when you effed around too much. And, and when you got to Texas, you committed to Texas and we went down, we drove down to get you into Texas. Talk about what happened there, because I think that was a big transitional point for you that day when you found out there was a possibility of what? Of me not going there. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was that was an interesting day. I didn't even. Yeah, that's that was that was an interesting day. Definitely <laughs> eye opening and just had me. uh I had to rewire myself, you know, it was like, uh, you got to focus in. So it was like, we went down there and then something with my grades, something with, I needed a, I didn't quite qualify or I had some, some, some things were missing. Some classes that were missing. Yeah. So then, yeah, we had to drive all the way back. I had all the stuff in my, yeah, we car, packed up. We had the, we had the car up, packed up. Ready, ready to, to go, go. Ready to ready for early enrollment. It was early enrollment. Yeah, you ready to go early enrollment. And you yeah. found out 
that I couldn't. That you effed around a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> that it didn't quite get in yet. <laughs> right. I couldn't come yet. So then, I mean, we drove three and a half hours, four hours from Dallas and had to drive right back. So, and what does that do for you mentally? No, I mean, it was, it was embarrassing. I mean, I thought I was in, thought I was ready. Because now you got to go back and face your kids, your, 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 your peers as well. Yeah. Not just family, because you say goodbyes to everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what I mean about the, the transition and, and, and the change and the pivot. There's, there's, all, there's points in your life where you can quit. You know, there's that, as they say, that fork in the road where you can go one way or the other. For you, it, it could have been a, a I'm pissed off at the world moment. But I think it changed you for the better, because like you said, I, you, you, you found out that you could have done a lot more and, and could have look and, and could have excused yourself from that embarrassment or you could have done a lot less and been embarrassed even more. So so for you, it made you do what? I had to grind harder. I had to lock in. I had to lock in. I mean, we I did all the summer school classes and. Um, yeah, I mean, I spent the summer just grinding. I mean, we went back to that was that actually gave me more time to get mentally right and prepare my body for mm -hmm. college football. I mean, we went back to work. Your off season was there, and then you know we started training again. And then I was doing summer school, more focused on, you know, I didn't even tell no one even knew I was back really. Then you hid. You hit out. <laughs> yes. No one even knew I was I was honestly back. Like I was in summer school. Like no one's there. No one's around. Like I had my I was going to and from the house, training. And then, you know, I'd run into somebody. They would, you know, they'd say, like, what? I thought you were like, oh, I'm just back for the weekend. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And, and see, so that's what was... happens. That's that's why I wanted to bring that up because there's other kids that's going through the same thing. You know, there's those kids that are going through the chance of going to college and not qualifying quite. There's some that, that know they didn't. There's some that, but whenever there's a pivot or a change, you can let it affect you either negatively or positively. And, and I think for you, it affected you mentally and emotionally in a positive manner because it made you grind harder. We'll talk about the change and, and what happened at Texas because there's pivots and, 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 and transitions all through this young man's life. And I say young man, even though he's my family, I've seen him grow, but we'll talk about that more when we get back. It's the block is always hot and we're gonna have a little toast straight with no chasing when we get back. This is Crockett's Corner. Welcome back to Crockett's Corner, where the block is always hot. Yes, I'm your host, Ray Crockett. This is the man, Henry Melton, my nephew, family. This is the family edition. We get to talk about, uh, we left <laughs> talking about the, the, the guy on uh, Instagram, where you almost found out that you effed around a little too much. You got way over in the F around bracket and almost found out that you, you effed around a little too much and didn't get into college. But it, it did give us a chance you and I to bond a little more because that was one of the first times you got a chance to come down to the Broncos training facility because you were off that summer mm -hmm. and you got to be a ball boy and everything got to train. Talk a little bit about that because I think that was your real first introduction to the NFL. Like you knew I played or whatever. You got to see me play, but to see what it took. Talk about that because I think that kind of changed your F around mindset when you got to go to training camp and, and see what it really takes to make it on that level. What do you remember about that? That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I did it two summers, right? Yeah, you did two summers in a row, yeah. Yeah, where I was literally living with you in the, the training camp dorm. Yeah. So it was, that was awesome. I mean, we had early, early, because I was a ball boy. So, so you had, had to early, get up early, you, you was crazy. up at five and five thirty in the morning. Crazy early morning. <laughs> But man, it was the experience and being around uh, now Hall of beyond Hall of Famers. One's running the Broncos organization, or yeah, yeah Broncos LA, organization, yeah. and the other one's running the Forty Nine. Oh yeah, oh oh yeah, yeah, with uh, uh, Shanahan's son. Yeah, yeah. So you you were on both sides. Matter of fact, you were you were ball boy with Cal Shanahan. Yeah, yeah, which so, is which is crazy within itself. Yeah. So that experience. To, to see world-class athletes, to see NFL players, 
to, to teach, basically to teach you how it's done. How, I mean, what do you think about that? What, what that, for you, what did that experience do for you? And, and do you feel that it put you in front of some of the other, some of your peers who, who didn't get that experience? I, I would say, hell yeah. I mean, you're getting a firsthand inside look. I mean, a lot of people show up, you know, a lot of fans or something, they'll show up for training camp and they'll see, you know, the grind, see the practices when it is open. Right. They'll get to see that. But you get to see the inner works, how hard it is, everything that these guys put into it. And I got to see it at a very young age. And just from me knowing that, just knowing how hard it would take to get there and to keep keep going in that profession was yeah it was definitely an eye-opening experience and definitely definitely gave me uh an upper hand for sure so is that when you decided or because i i never i never really asked you this this is one of the first times i'm asking you when you decided that i wanted to be or i for sure know i want to be in the nfl I know you knew you saw me playing and whatnot, but for you to say, I can do this, when, when did that come about? Probably in, in high school when I made uh, varsity as a freshman. When I when all the skills, that all the training and all that stuff, would, it, it was put into work and I was just way, I was, I could just feel that I was just way better than everyone. And that's when I knew that if I stayed on track, you know, stayed healthy and kept grinding that, you know, I definitely had the possibility of making it, but I still had crazy love for baseball, but it was falling off just because I just, it's hard to play baseball angry. Right. Because then you look kind of silly. If you don't, if you kind of swing Cause angry. Because that's, that's a different sport. Emotionally, yeah, you, you have, have to, to have a mindset. kind of level, yeah. kill, even kill. Yeah. And you, you can't be, like you say, you can't attack a baseball like you would a person exactly. because then you strike out a lot. Yeah. Which you were a, a feast of famine type of baseball player. I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I, would, no, I do remember you striking out quite a bit. <laughs> but when I made contact, it was a wrap. <laughs> Look, you ain't, hey. you ain't even going to talk about that, huh? <laughs> Don't get all. I was nice. I was nice at baseball. You and I was baseball. fast. You as soon as I, and I could still... I was still in everything. If I got on base, you I'm could still, definitely steal bases. Like you definitely was fast, but you was definitely one of those once every five times. <laughs> hey, that's all you need. And you know what? And that's that's, that's the thing about baseball for me. You know, I, I played baseball in in high school, and I I couldn't play it mm -hmm. because it was just too boring. It was too too boring. I I, I recall vividly one time I played outfield. Center field. I recall vividly, you know, back then, a lot of people couldn't hit the ball. Yeah. So you didn't get a whole lot of balls, as they say in center field, going gap to gap. I, I actually sat down one time. I didn't, I didn't, that's how bored I was. I knew then I couldn't play baseball. So that's, that look, that's a story for another day. I effed around and found out <laughs> that I couldn't play baseball. Couldn't now, do it. Now, I couldn't do it. Now, well, now the same way. To, uh, the same way, though. Yeah. It was, yeah, it, it got a little too slow for me, especially, like, you know, going through what I was going through, like, with the dad still, looking in the stands, seeing if he was there or not. You know, I had the emotions, man. I, 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 I'm glad that you took it there. Because um, I, I – talk about that. Because – a, a lot of times, I, th I think kids take it for granted. And, and I want to say this. I think kids take it for granted when they have their parents in the stands or their dads in the stands, and, and they don't know the difficult transition that is to do what you just said, looking over your shoulder, looking up in the stands, trying to see if your dad is there. Talk a little bit about that because you you had it both ways. You had it to where you had him there for a while, and then you had to go to what you just talked about—the looking in the stands and see. Talk about that, man. Talk because because that's that's important for kids these days. I feel. Yeah, I mean, just going through that, you know, playing games and you know just taking a peek, you know, a little glance. You know, it started getting distant towards the end, you know, but you know, I was still just maybe like taking a peek, but then it would just turn into. All right, he gonna see me in the papers and we gonna eat today. Then I see my mom, see the fam out there. You know, we gonna do this. Let's ball. 
So it so it turned into from where are you to you gonna see me? Yeah, make sure you see me. So so that's yeah. that bottle of energy and see that's and that and that's that chip on the show because a lot of people don't know what drives certain people. So and so that's what happens. I mean, sometimes when you can take a, a negative situation and actually make it a positive thing, and I actually saw that with you. I saw. I saw it being a tough time and, and me being your uncle, I, I kind of didn't know where to, you know, where to go with that because it was kind of like you kind of step in a follow role, but you're still the uncle. And, and you know, it, it was a tough time for, for me adjusting to that role as well. But I saw something in you where I said, this is a good thing. A lot of people wouldn't notice that, but I saw a, a young man turn into a man that was focused and it doesn't matter how you get there. What matters is that you got there, is that you got to that point to where you was like, I'm not going to lose. But it was really more so because of the situation that you were going to talk about that for a brief moment, because that chip is, is a is a tougher chip to carry because it, it's not something that you have to make up. Like, say, for instance, for me, my chip was. I didn't want to be doing the stuff that my brothers did, you know, hanging out on the streets, being the, I, I was like, I, I had to change, but I had to manufacture that. You know what I mean? I had to manufacture that because my mom and dad was still together, whatever. They were still in the stands. So I had to find something. You, you didn't have a manufactured chip. Talk a little bit about that because that, I think that's the, the best chip to have is one that you really want to prove something. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, just making it to where, um, you know, every game was, you know, I had to, I had to show up, you know, it was for, I, there was different levels to it. I mean, there was different levels. I'm not going to say it was all because of, you know, one thing or the other, but it definitely helped like my game. But then it was like, then I would see you play. I would see my mom working. I would see, you know, just, I just had a lot of things that I just was like, we got to do this. We got to eat. And right. there was a lot of stress. I mean, there was not going to say it didn't transition into other things that didn't that in the, in the off, off the field. Like I was, you know, wilding out, but for football, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to toast to you getting into college because there was a time that you almost effed around a little too much and didn't get in. So we're, we're toast to that. But now once you get to college, ain't nothing like a little jack. Once you get to college, <laughs> let's talk about a little bit about that because you and I kind of had a battle now. <laughs> it's, the first, it's probably the first real battle that you and I have ever had as far as really having to sit down and talk. You wanted to play running back. I thought your ass was too big. <laughs> so so we're arguing back and forth. I remember vividly, I said, okay, you know what? Your freshman year, I, I wanted you to move to the defense side of the ball. You kind of got pissed at me and, and didn't talk to me for a number of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Talk, let's talk about that because that, that was a, a, a tough time for, for both of us because I saw the future. I saw with me being a professional player and with me seeing guys that were bigger, that played running back, I knew eventually you would have to go to the defense side of the ball. You still wanted to chase the women and, and wanted the women to see you score. <laughs> so you wanted to stay on the offense side of the ball. Talk a little bit about that because that was that was a, a, a trying moment for both of us. <laughs> yeah, still pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> you still pissed about it because I was right. Still pissed. Because I was right. You wouldn't let me have my moment. You had your moment. You I had came your moment in there, high school. I came into UT as Thinking an you was going to shine. No, I got recruited as an athlete. Right. So I wasn't, I never an even had. That they knew they was going to play defense. Nah, because I came in there, I had to earn that spot. That's a national championship team as a freshman. Yes. Okay. They don't so, hand out, they so never you, handed so out So you're there as a running back. So you're there as a running back. Yeah, well, they just, they were like, let's see how it does. Like, it wasn't even guaranteed. Right. They came in, though, you know, at that point, re Texas recruiting wasn't even nothing crazy. It wasn't even like, oh, we're going to, we're going to promise you this, promise you that. Right. Like, they were so good. 
Yeah. They don't have to do the things. This, they have this to do. is the Texas team with Vince Young, Jamal Charles. He actually came in with Jamal Charles, just to preface it a little bit. Yeah. They they win the national championship his freshman year. The year before they were they won the Rose Bowl. And they won the Rose Bowl. And they the had the before. same dudes coming. Like they had the same, a lot of same returning starters. So they were number one, number two with USC wanting to repeat or going back to going back to the Rose Bowl. And you wanted to play running back. Yeah, I mean, you get I to said, play running back your first year. You do, you do, you do pretty well. I'll give you that. You do did, pretty. You well. did really well. You did really well because do you pretty well. well. Re- really well. I take that back. You and Jamal really? Charles broke the the freshman record. You're pissing me off again. <laughs> <laughs> you and Jamal Charles. We broke the freshman, broke touchdown, the freshman record. touchdown record. Still holding it. You still hold the record. Still holding but, it. But I, I did say, pretty well. You did very well. I averaged six yards a carry at a at goal line back. You, you did me? at goal line back. You did very well, but. Still, still. At goal line, I, you, how do I average six yards when, I, well. when no, goal line is only I two yards? That. You did well, but but my vision, here, here was the problem, and, and we're talking about it again. Look, on national TV now, we're going to have, we're going to get, I knew this. I told you, I said, dude, you're too big. They're going to get you down there. They're going to they're gonna let you play, of course, running back, and they did, and you did very well. I take that back. I, I Pretty well, I, very well. You, you still have a touchdown record, but I knew eventually that you were going to be disappointed because you wasn't going to get the shine like you wanted as far as being an every down back. So yeah. talk talk about that after coming from your freshman year because you did think that you were going to have a chance to be an every down back. How did that turn out of your sophomore year? Well, I mean, after you know winning the national, national. championship, we had a great season, one of the best still – Arguably one of the best I teams think, ever. I, I think it's one of the best teams ever. Ever. Without a doubt. Assembled. And, and and beating the team that y'all beat. That USC team. Yeah, which also was, goes was, down in one of the. Yeah, was. You're talking about. One of the best teams ever. Where they have three Heisman Trophy or two Heisman Trophy winners. Yeah. Back to back or whatever with, with the quarterback and then with running. Reggie Bush. It was, it, was a, it was the best game I've ever been to. I thank you for that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think on my running back legs. At on that on point. your running back legs. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, yes. So talk, <laughs> talk about your sophomore year going into there and, and and not being as promised as you thought it would be. How did that make you feel? And and then we had to have another conversation. Let's talk about that before we go to break. <laughs> Second year, not as not as successful. Vince Young's gone. You know, there's some other every, a lot of seniors left, so there was some them holes that need to be filled. I was still playing running back. I still averaged fifty five yards a carry. Right. I was still, hey, I was, right. <laughs> you know, I was still getting my yardage. Right. But it wasn't as obviously the whole season as a whole wasn't as successful. And then they started seeing where, and I just so it just so happened it worked out. I mean, like going out of my sophomore year. It wasn't as successful. Then I got you in my ear bugging me every day. You gonna make the switch? You gonna make the switch? So then I had that, had a meeting with Coach Brown. And then, uh, yeah, I was like, let's just try defense. Let's get it. And we had some seniors that were on the way out. Right, exactly. That that the opportunity was there. We're going to talk about a little bit about this chain. Because something I'm going to tell them that he didn't know that I did We'll be back on Crockett's Corner where the block is always hot. As you can see, even the family edition doesn't always go well. We'll be back.
it becomes you, you start to think about what am I going to be life after football? But but that's that's what you get, man. And, and this is what this platform for me was all about and why I really wanted a platform like this, because I mentor so many kids that go through it. You know, they go through it. You, your family go through divorce. You know, you have trials and tribulations. You, you, you flunk some classes. You do well. There's all kind of stuff that happens. But in life, you can do one or two things. You can let the, the trials and tribulations and the pain and the negativity, you can let it make you stuck in a bad way or you can make it help you grow in a good way. And I think that's what you've done. It was a tough thing to do, but if you formulate your mindset, because everything happens in the mind first, if you formulate your mindset that I don't care what I go through, I'm not gonna let it break me, I'm gonna let it make me. Through all the trials and tribulations, I just wanna say, man, look here, Neff. Hey, I'm proud of you. I'm happy to see the man and the father that you are, and I, and I just wanna see you keep prospering and keep growing. And for you guys out there, don't let the pain bring you down, let it bring you up. Let it move you forward, let it help you grow. Straight with no tracer, this is Crockett's Corner where the block is always hot.